Greetings, Mr. Nowicki here. Today I'm going to talk to you about um, the Affinia H400 3D printer. I'm going to show you how to set up a file that you've created in Inventor or Autodesk Fusion 360. You will need what is called an STL file that stands for stereolithography. So in Inventor or Fusion, you would have had to uh, exported your 3D model. That can't be a sketch. It has to be a 3D model. You would have had to have uh, exported it as an STL. Uh, might be, I believe in Inventor, it's under CAD format. Then you select STL from the file type. In order to launch a Affinia H400, you're going to click on the Start menu. Scroll down and look for Affinia Studio. And then go ahead and launch the software. You may or may not have a shortcut on your desktop. Um, and that's okay if you don't. Now you know how to find it on the menu. So these are two, we have two of these 3D printers. Um, these are for smaller prints, uh, pretty good quality. So uh, it also actually prints in uh, ABS or PLA. So uh, if you need something a little stronger that is smaller, the ABS would work just fine. Okay, so um, let's assume you have your STL file all ready to go. We're going to click on build, and then we're going to click on the plus sign. Now, I have my, um, my format here. If you click on the settings here, um, I believe it's, no, it's not under printer or language. I'm trying to think of where this setting is. Oh, here it is. It's under the, the skin, the shirt color. Uh, so I like a lighter color. That's just so I can see everything better. Um, I don't care which one you use. I just tend to find this a little easier to find the options that we need to find when we're setting up the the print. All right, so I'm going to click on the plus sign. You can actually do some basic modeling in this software. It's not huge, but it's a pretty decent selection. You can also pull in a picture and mess around with that and create an extraction or extrusion from that. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and grab my STL file. And uh, there it is. It automatically places it for me. Um, just like in Inventor, if I uh, click on a certain mouse menu, it lets me kind of flip it around and take a look at it. So first thing I want to do is um, make sure that I have it laid out uh, the way I need it to be laid out. It's laying flat. <coughs> Sometimes with different shapes, uh, shaped prints, you'll have to rotate it. In order to do that, you need to actually select the model. And then you're going to come up here. These are your different... Um, um, model options where you actually change or modify or scale, rotate, that kind of thing. So I can move it, I can rotate it. Um, let's say this wasn't the right print uh, or the right rotation. You know, I could put it up on its side, that kind of thing. Um, and then let's see, I can also move it and I can create, uh, there's a way to create copies and that kind of thing and fix different errors if there's like a weird shape in there. Um, the other thing is if you want to see what it's going to look like, um, like a like a wire mode, um, the solid mode, and then um, like the actual kind of what it, like a mesh mode, that kind of thing. Uh, it doesn't matter which one it's on. This is just how it appears. So the next thing we also want to do is we want to scale it. Uh, what's cool about this software is if you actually, you know, I could, I could change the size here. Um, but if I only want to, if I want to click on the lock, and let's say I want to make uh, everything about this, I, I want to keep it that size, but I only want to make it taller, then I can grab just the Z axis by clicking that lock so it's unlocked, and then I can just click one of these access points and just scale that part of it, uh, which is really, really a pretty cool feature. All right, so then uh, once I'm done rotating it, getting it into position, the next thing I can do is get ready to um, get ready to set it up to send to the printer. So I'm going to click on print, and here is where I want to set my layer thickness. Uh, 0.2 or 0.15 is fine. I'm going to do a 0.2. Uh, the infill is 20%. You can um, you can make it you know 80, 99. Uh, but anything you're doing here is typically 20% is fine. The quality is fast. There is no nozzle offset. What that means is, um, let's say you printed this part in one color 
and it was a three millimeter thick part, you could do an offset of plus three millimeters. So it started off with the second color um, at that point, at that as its starting point. Um, raft means it lays down this extra piece of plastic for it to adhere to the bed. And then support would be if you had an odd shape of something, like if you were printing, um, say, a 3D version of the letter R, uh, not the capital one where it has that little hook part that overhangs. If you were standing it up, you would need a support on that smaller part so that it, it actually was able to print that. All right, and then when you're all set, you can actually do a preview. Nothing too fancy about this print here. Um, and then once I can just exit the preview, and then I can get ready to actually send this to print. I don't have a printer actually connected, but uh, when I'm all set, I can just... Um... So again, once you're ready to print, um, you can go up to this more option, and this gives you some other places. Like if you had some errors, that kind of thing you could fix. You could set uh, your supports. You could change them if you needed to. And then you can click on save the model. So this is actually going to save it in the Affinia software file extension, which is a, a .up3. And that's fine um, because when you have to bring it over to the printer that's actually connected to the to the 3D printer or the computer that's actually connected to the 3D printer, it'll open this file up just fine. So then you would save it to a flash drive, put in whatever your class period is, for or dash your last name, and then, uh, you know, print one of two or something, you know, something that gives it a little bit of description so that we know, you know, maybe how many prints you're going to be sending, what class period, your name. Um, this gives us a lot more information to go on instead of just some random uh, file convention. But then you would go ahead and save it to your flash drive, close out the program, and then load it up on the actual printer or computer that's hooked up to the 3D printer. And that's kind of it in a nutshell. The big thing is to open up a model in here and actually play around with the different settings. That's the best way for you to get to know this software. All right, thanks.